Hi guys, AJ with Relentless Racing. I'm standing in front of my B20 and every B20 that I've seen that has been a race motor is always leaked right here. Mine drives me nuts. This particular one, if I were to flip this block over, this whole thing would just drop right out of the block. Before that happened, it would leak right here and it would leak right onto the header. And obviously if this thing fell out and it leaked a bunch of oil on the header, that could be a real safety issue because I don't want to catch on fire when I'm racing. So this video is going to talk about fixing this particular issue on the B20. Hopefully I can figure it out and we'll see what happens. My solution to the B20 oil leak is to not only bond the oil dipstick tube, but also to apply a set screw to the oil dipstick tube so it can't come out in this direction. Furthermore, I'd also like to swage the bottom part of the oil dipstick tube by using a drift. And what the drift will do is it will open the OD of the oil dipstick tube so that way no JB weld could fall through it and be sucked up into my motor. So here's the orientation of the block. I have it kind of flipped on its side. So this is what we're trying to repair. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna blow a hole right in here and I'm gonna put a set screw in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna center punch this guy. So I'm gonna be using this 332 bit to just go right on through. Now to prep this thing for the tap, I'm gonna take a 3 16 inch drill bit and I'm just going to do this quickly by hand and just do a small amount of work here by hand and you can see that there is a small chamfer now. Now to do the tap, I'm going to use an M3. You want to make sure that you really do have an M3 and check the pitch on this thing, make sure it's correct. So I'm just going to lube it and then start tapping. So very important when you're tapping that you try and get this thing as straight as possible. So I'm gonna use my other hand to support this guy and just kind of look at it really closely and get her started. So it's customary to go half turn and then back quarter and you're just cleaning is what you're doing. So every once in a while I go back a little bit and clean and she popped all the way through already. So support it on the way out and there's the cleaned up hole. This right here is an M3 set screw that I'm gonna be using and it is eight millimeters long. Notice it has a little bit of a cap at the end. And so I'm gonna put a divot into the oil dipstick tube. Now I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check the thread. Just make sure that everything works well. So now we're just gonna take this thing out. So now I'm gonna place the oil dipstick tube into position. I wanna make sure that this thing is positioned properly so that way the dipstick comes up in its proper location. So let's put a little mark right here and one right here as well. So I'm just lining it up with the hole right there. So put a mark on there. And so once the tube is aligned, I'm just going to put a quick mark in the tube by hitting the transfer punch with a hammer. And if you look carefully at the end of this tube, you could see a little divot right there. That is the mark. And so now I'm going to take a drill, and I'm going to put a little divot right in there. I'm not going to blow a hole through it, but I'm going to definitely going to put a divot in there. Here's the tube. You can see the small divot right there. I'm going to take a 332 and kind of give it a starting point. And then I'm going to put another bigger drill bit on there. I just want to make sure that this is in the right spot. Again, the idea is not to go through it. It's just to give it a good starting point, something to bite on. Now take a look at that divot. This is 964. Now look at that divot. That divot looks pretty good. When we put this guy in here, if I position the line properly and I put this set screw in, not only will it hold it still, it won't allow it to come out because it'll be stuck in this divot. So we're gonna do that in addition to some glue. This hole right here is the bottom side of the oil dipstick tube. So the oil dipstick tube, this guy right here, actually goes on the outside and comes up through here. 
So when you push it through, you'll kind of see it popping up through there. You can kind of see it right there. You could take a bottle brush. This one is 0.5 in diameter, stainless steel bristles, galvanized in. It did have a hook, I just chopped it off, put it in my drill, and then you could run this through here to clean it. Now I'm gonna take this bottle. This bottle has acetone in it, and you could see that I've got some Q-tips in here, and these are from McMaster, and I use acetone to clean up this whole area. So I'm just gonna take this guy in here and clean up as best that I can. Get everything out of there and you can see all the filth that is on that Q-tip. So I'm just gonna keep cleaning these things until those things come out clean because that's gonna affect your adhesion with the JB Weld. So here's where the tube goes in. I wanna get this leading edge right here and just make sure she's super clean. And then again, it goes for this top area. I'm even gonna clean the set screw hole right here. Here's some 100 grit sandpaper. I'm just gonna place this guy, the end of the oil dipstick tube in there and twist it around. And I'm trying to formulate some good surface, some good rough surface for the JB Weld to adhere to. Next, I'm gonna take some acetone and I'm gonna clean off the tube. Let's add our mark back. I'm just eyeing it right here. In order to hold the oil dipstick tube in the hole during bonding and to hold this tube still while I'm trying to swage the bottom end of the oil dipstick tube, I had to create some tooling. So I created a tool to hang on to the oil dipstick tube. There is an integrated flange, which is right there, and the tube fits a 12 millimeter socket. So I just opened a 12 millimeter socket, welded it to an extension, and it just slides along the tube and applies force to the flange at the bottom of the oil dipstick tube. The Irwin clamp is attached to my tool, and then the tool pushes on to the flange that's at the base of the oil dipstick tube. The other end of the Irwin clamp attaches to the bottom of the block. And you have to be careful that you position it so that you still have access to the bottom of the oil dipstick tube. Unfortunately, I didn't capture the butter bond of the oil dipstick tube to the block. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a simulated butter bond so that way you guys can understand the concept. My apologies. So lay out two strips of JB Weld and make sure you mix them nicely. I just use a piece of cardboard and I just want to get a nice consistent color. Butter bonding is a really simple process. All you gotta do is grab some bond on a little stick. And let's just assume that this transfer punch is the oil dipstick tube. All you wanna do is coat this thing completely around. Just put a liberal amount of JB Weld on there. And the key is to make sure that you have more thickness than what your bond line thickness is. And then, after you're finished with this, you coat the inside of the hole that this thing's going into in the exact same way. Just butter it up, hence the name Butter Bond. And then when you push this thing into the hole, you're gonna have to do some cleanup. So inevitably, you're gonna have some bond in here and so you're gonna have to clean it all up. And all I do is I just take my swabs, which have acetone on them, and I just clean this up real slowly. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and clean out any bond that is inside this hole. So here's the view from the other side. You can see the bottom of the oil dipstick tube so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swedge that thing open just a little bit by applying a drift in there and I'm gonna whack it with a hammer and then you'll notice these edges that are around here are gonna close up. So that's the reason for this tool because when I whack on it, I don't want that thing to come down. I'm hoping this tool works. Let's try it out. So again, I'm gonna stick this drift right in here and I'm gonna get a whack. 
So you could definitely tell that that thing opened up just quite a bit. Let's see on the other side what it looks like. It looks like the tool worked pretty well, just the way I designed it to work. It held in. We got a good bond on there. That looks great. All right, let's clean it up. Check out how clean that thing looks. And notice that the drift worked really well. It pushed open the OD of the oil dipstick tube. And so what's great about that is if any of the JD weld lets loose that's on the inside over there, it's not gonna come out because this guy is swedged in there. Here's our set screw, which has been freshly cleaned with acetone and then dry. So you can see that the set screw is just started. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply a little bit of Permatex Gray on the edge as I rotate it in. So I'm not gonna over tighten it. All I'm gonna do is just use the end of it and give it a couple of little twists, just enough to torque this a little bit. And again, it's not over torqued. Then clean the excess off. Here's a great view of the finished product. You can see in this particular fix that I came up with, it has some great design features to it. One, the tube is held in by JB Weld, but just in case the JB Weld fails, I added a set screw in here so that way the tube can't fall out. Another great design feature of this solution is I decided to swage the bottom of the oil dipstick tube. I did this because if the JB Weld ever breaks down, I didn't want the JB Weld to fall into my oil pan. And by swaging this, it essentially locks the JB Weld in there. Hey guys, thanks again for watching this video. I hope you learned a bunch of stuff on here. If this doesn't work, I'm not so sure what else to do with this guy to get this thing not to leak, but this is my best effort to get it not to leak. Hopefully this will work. In any case, leave your comments. If you guys have any suggestions or any other solutions, I'd love to hear them. Also, please hit that like button. And if you could subscribe, that would really help me out. I'd really appreciate all the views. Stay relentless out there and definitely stay safe. Have a good one.